the story of the House of Peace dates back uh, to 2015 when I had a dream of uh, so, someone who seemed like a Pokot uh, warrior, a uh, middle-aged man with um, a garment uh, wrapped up uh, around their loin. But uh, more significant was the wound on their left uh, hand, their left chest. And uh, this wound seemed to have been a bullet wound from uh, their back exiting from, from the chest. It was an open, huge, uh, fresh, uh, dirty wound and uh, he was leaning towards the wound and um, was emerging from a mountain on a dusty path full of um, uh, uh, maram and uh, pebbles and he seems to have been begging for help and uh, when I saw that I was coming towards him but uh, when I saw the young man emerge that gave me a lot of fear and I almost turned back to run away and uh, since then the question has been what that dream meant what is it all about yeah why why the Pokot man why the wound why the fear in me, yeah, and almost running away. He was not armed, he was only wounded, coming towards me. Actually, I didn't know whether he was coming towards me or he was rushed, I don't know where he was going, but it was towards where I was. But I, 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 I felt fearful, yeah. So that kept provoking our, our thinking asking God what it's all, is it all about and that's where the idea of House of Peace came in that it's a place it's a place where this man is able to, to run to and receive the healing of this gaping actually you say it uh, you, you see deadness and uh, fresh bleeding wounds here, yeah? some festering, yeah? this is where they come and receive the healing. That's where the journey of the House of Peace began until today when it is established as a, a place of debriefing, a place where uh, workers and the people in pain emotional hearts, uh, psychological, where such people come and find a safe place to, to air out and receive refreshed and renewed, renewed hope. That is the short uh, brief about the House of Peace. Uh, people don't normally uh, find it easy to share their experiences and especially if these experiences are difficult or painful. Uh, the briefings are set to give that conducive environment where people are able to process their experiences in a safe environment and they are able to see how these experiences are, are, are impacting their relationships and this can help in uh, bringing uh, reconciliation to their relationships to God, to themselves, and to others. Therefore, this is what uh, debriefing sets to do. Produce, uh, give that conducive environment for one to be able to share their heart and to be able to uh, process their experiences in a safe environment. The House of Peace um, debriefing center is meant to serve the needs of the community the needs of the, the, the workplace uh, personnel. Think of uh, the clergy, think of the police force, whereby 
these, these are professions that uh, people tend to have a lot of baggages in their hearts as they move along a lot of traumatic uh, experiences that uh, could easily cause them uh, uh, to cause harm to others and also cause uh, uh, harm to themselves. Also, even if they are living, you find they live a life of undriftedness just because of the baggage and the burdens they are carrying along in their hearts. So this center is meant, or rather it's a secure place and has qualified debriefers that are meant to address the needs of such people. Uh, Way of Peace has been able to take uh, groups and individuals through the House of Peace uh, in a debriefing sessions where they, uh, most of them are able to come out rejuvenated, refreshed and uh, with more zeal for ministry or even for their personal lives. Uh, many have found closure even for experiences that are difficult and uh, which uh, initially uh, had impacted their lives negatively. People have also been able to reconcile with themselves, with God and even with others uh, through passing the process of uh, debriefing. Uh, we have been able uh, to have many uh, testimonies of people who had been impacted negatively by the experiences that they have gone through. But after going through a debriefing, uh, they were able to uh, go back to their normal life. A good example is one pastor who had even lost her speech. And uh, during the sessions, she actually struggled even to tell her story. It is okay. Baba before the end of that year, the cut the test.
believe it or not. Mimi inafika wakati. Nilikuwa nafika mkoma babao. Huja mimi ni mimi. Na ukili vizuri watu nabarikiwa. Na ikawa ni kama ni jambo linaangaza wengi. Hata nikipoka nje sabunde ya uh, the briefing therefore uh, sets to achieve much and uh, to both individuals and even groups and especially ministry workers who and those in helping professions who most of the times uh, listen to a lot of pain and difficult experiences of others and as a result uh, sometimes this pain is transferred to them but through debriefing they're able to share these experiences so that the negative uh, or the pain that they have uh, ex uh, received or listened from others does not impact their own lives the way of peace organization uh, was uh, brought to me or to my attention by one of our priests and they informed me about uh, the programs offered by way of peace organization and how they could benefit not only our clergy but laity uh, on matters of bringing healing uh, and uh, restoring people back to good mental health and so i inquired more uh, conversations uh, led to the next and we eventually decided to enter into a formal uh, partnership agreement with of peace starting with the debriefing program uh, which we said will start with the clergy so that they themselves will be healed first on the importance of the program and then see ways in which we can spread it to reach out to as many Christians. I must admit that uh, I was privileged to be part of the initial debriefing program and uh, it was one of the most uh, revitalizing and renewing experience uh, in many levels. Number one, it gave me opportunity to just come and do some self-examination, to personally reflect on my own life, uh, what are some of the events uh, that have shaped my journey. And the more I was given the opportunity to do that reflection, I began to realize just how some events have impacted me at an emotional level, at a spiritual level, that I had not realized. And so as I was looking through that journey, I began to come to terms with people and uh, events that have shaped who I have become. Uh, the other part uh, was also to give me skills to help in uh, counseling people who are going through stress, uh, how I can just give them some basic skills on how to deal with that. I think the biggest part for me was the part where after reorganizing the events or people I probably carried with me uh, subconsciously without even thinking and how it has impacted me or my relationship with those people or others uh, that uh, I need to get that, to get over with that and not to let that shape how I think about people, how I deal with people, how I conduct myself. Uh, I think the final exercise of uh, nailing all that onto the cross and burning it was very relieving. Just to say, you know, at, uh, at some point I need to have a, a, a routine in which I say, hey, what is it that is really been affecting me? And I say, enough with this. I cannot continue carrying people and individuals who are affecting me in a negative way. I need at some point to say, I want to do this to end here and open a new in my life. That for me was uh, significant. We have three different categories of uh, members of my diocese who participated in the debriefing. Number one is the clergy. Uh, over 70 clergy participated uh, in three different cohorts. And uh, I know when I met them, just casually asking them how uh, the program has been, all of them just said, my soul is healed. I did not recognize just how much uh, pain or bitterness or memories from the past have continued to affect 
the way I work or the way I deal with the people. So that healing was great. The briefing kwangu ni kama safari ambayo unapita katika hatua moja ikiongoza kwa nyingine mpaka ufike mahali ambapo ile mizigo umebeba ukaitoa na ukaweka chini. Ilinisaidia kwa kunipatia mwelekeo kwa huduma kwa sababu baada hiyo nilikuwa na amani na na pia mwelekeo wa kufanya huduma na pia kaniwezesha kuwasaidia hasa family members na hata wale wa Kristo ambao ninawahudumia kuweza kutua hiyo mizigo na kuwa huru katika mioyo na maisha yao a lot of clergy are just going through uh, one activity to the next without opportunity to rest to reflect uh and just see where they are where they are still fulfilling what God uh, purpose for them the next group were the uh, spouses of the clergy they also came in and uh, a lot of them expressed uh, the impact that it gave to them actually it really helped us on areas whereby we could find some difficulties and uh, we didn't know way how to how to solve and maybe you could feel like it's maybe you alone going through this yeah, but we are able to learn that uh, it's actually human to go through some grieving moments and also to come out of it it has really created a lot of positive impact because now after several interaction with the clergy wives and the spouses who attended uh, the way we interact together is so positive and uh, i find it so healthy because uh, many issues that were underlying maybe unforgiven issues that were within ourselves were just dealt with we pray for one another during those teachings and uh, i found that now when we interact together everything we discuss we take it positively we encourage ourselves in a manner that uh, it is making us move forward and also not holding one another's grudges because we uh, some of us actually were able to cry out of so many other things that they uh, the burdens they had taken right from some years back after releasing i found that uh, our interaction is so positive they are also able to give me ideas we share ideas together in a very positive way. The breathing really helped them uh, uh, empty that out and bring healing to them as well. The last group were just uh, women uh, from others union who also wanted to participate in that. For them, the impact was on their families. They said, you know, there are many things that I have not been able to tell anybody else. This gave me opportunity to share with either the partner during the debriefing or between me and my god during the silent moment say it is the first time i was able to share some of the deep things that have affected me so overall uh, the program has had a big impact for the clergy the non clergy the laity a lot of them were just talking about the grieving process sometimes you you go through the grieving process or you and you don't know how to help yourself because the clergy you don't have anybody to go to you will believe they have what it takes to i would uh, to be resilient to whatever trauma or uh, some effects that uh, have affected their lives yet they don't have anybody to talk to the debriefing process told them go to god go to another person share and as you share uh, it is part of the healing process uh it is open not only for the kenyans but also the the anyone uh in the region and uh, far especially for missioners uh this house is also linked to the debriefing center uh, in France called uh, Le Rouge and therefore as uh, as a center we serve those who are closer into this region while that center serves uh, overseas uh, missioners This is the house of peace, a secure, safe and a serene environment meant to serve people who have difficulties in their hearts 
maybe out of traumatic experiences, out of uh, work overload, out of life hurts of many forms, this is the place for you just to come and pour out in the safe feet of Jesus under the guidance of qualified and experienced uh, debriefers who are also led of the Spirit of God. Now,